here is the login, and here is the card. $1,337. We remove it, we keep it only one. What we do, we do a refresh, and you can see, total 0.02. I place an order, or I try, and your order is on its way. Successfully done. Hey everyone, it's Annie Wolfman here, back with another video. And fresh after long holidays, lying down on the beach, enjoying exotic drinks and sun. Actually, not really. As usual, I was busy with the business, related topic, closing the fourth quarter and the entire year, but no complaints. But before we start, I've noticed that almost 92% of the viewers are not subscribers. So if you love my content and you would like to support me in creating more, please take a few seconds to subscribe, like and comment. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your efforts. Now, in 2011, a team of computer security researchers exploited serious flaws in online shopping site buy.com and were able to buy items for free or almost for free. In that case, the problem lied in the three prolonged nature of the payment system, which typically involves specialized merchant software that links a retailer website with a payment processing company, such as Amazon Payment or PayPal. Now, hackers can profit by intercepting and faking communications involving the website and the software. In one attack, the researchers used a plugin for the Firefox web browser to examine data being sent and received by the online retailer Buy.com. Now, when the users make purchase, Buy.com directs them to PayPal. Once they have paid, PayPal sends Buy.com a confirmation message tagged with a code that identified the transaction. Now, PayPal handles its side of the process securely, but apparently Buy.com was relatively easy to fool. First, the team purchased an item and noted that the confirmation code used by PayPal. Then they selected the second item on Buy.com, but did not pay up. Instead, they used the code from the first transaction to fake a confirmation message, which Buy.com accepted as proof of payment. Now, can it happen today as well? Of course, everything is always possible, and today's session is aimed to demonstrate how hackers can exploit application business logic and buy items for free or almost free. Now, remember that hacking without permission is illegal, and the purpose of today is for educational purposes only, to raise awareness and help organizations and professionals close loopholes and overcome vulnerabilities in their system. So everything I will do is will we'll be on a dedicated focus uh, a platform and control environment. But before the demonstration, how does e-commerce uh, work? An e-commerce website allows customers to buy products by providing a platform for business to sell their products online. The website typically includes a catalog or list of products available for purchase, detailed product description and pricing information. Customers can browse the website and view the products that are available for sale. When they find a product they want to purchase, they can add it to their online shopping cart and check out. The customer will be asked to provide their shipping and billing information and payment method at checkout. Once this information is entered, the customer can complete the purchase and the order will be processed. Now, some e-commerce websites offer additional features, such as customers' reviews, product rating, and personalized uh, product recommendation to help customers make informed purchasing decisions. So, how do hackers make their purchases with unintended prices? While building an e-commerce store, developers often assume that the client will only use standard web browser, in example, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc., to access the web application. This assumption is dangerous because it leads to the further belief that client-side validation will prevent users from supplying malicious input. Hackers use tools like Burp Sweep or Zap Proxy tools and change the data after the browser has sent it uh, before passing it into the server-side logic. This effectively renders the client-side controls useless. Improper 
integrity checks and server-side validation can allow an attacker to do all kinds of damage. Attackers tempers the price value by using proxy tools before it's received by the server itself and can let it, the attackers buy items with their unintended price. I will demonstrate this vulnerability to show you how attackers can exploit these business logic vulnerabilities. Now, to demonstrate how hackers can buy products for free or at their intended, the unintended price, I will use Portswigger Academy, an online platform that offers training in web application security. It is named after its parent company, Portswigger, behind the popular Burp Sweep web security tool. The Academy provides a range of courses and training materials on topics such as web security, penetration testing, and ethical hacking. These courses help individuals develop the skills and knowledge needed to identify and mitigate security vulnerabilities in web applications. I truly recommend anyone that wants to become an ethical hacker to look into it. Yet, there are more platforms, and if you are interested, I will share a link in the description about this, this all. So, initial uh, setup. First thing first, make sure the Burp Suite Community Edition is installed on your computer. It's free and is one of the well-known web penetration testing tools used by almost every web application hacker. Also make sure to set up the Foxy Proxy extension in your browser and you can do this by using the following uh, instruction. I will leave the link here also on the screen and in the description so you can easily look into it. If you have difficulty setting the proxy, setting for BurpSweep, don't worry, BurpSweep comes with a built-in browser which the developers have already uh, set and I will use that browser in our demonstration. So if you cannot do the, install the plugin or as issues, do that. Now, you also need to sign up on uh, Portswigger Academy before continuing this demonstration and you can do this by visiting the URL given below. Okay, so before proceeding to the next steps, open the install Burp Sweep uh, Community Edition. When it goes up, you can choose the proxy tab, make sure the intercept is off, later I will explain. And as I mentioned before, we will use the internal browser and I will just put here the link, the URL for Portswigger platform. I will leave it also in the descriptions so you can use it. I already did this lab before, but let's do it again. Let's log in. Okay, now I logged in. We are in the lab. I already did it before, but I, I want to show you again. So let's see if I can access the lab. So now we, you can see I'm at the shop and I have a store credit of $100. That's what I have. Let's try to buy this leather uh, jacket. I go to the product itself. Of course, with $100 store credit, I cannot buy $1,337 uh, item, right? Let's add it to the cart. Let's see if it moved, moved into the cart, going into the checkout. Excellent. Let's try to place an order now with the $100. And what we get? Not enough store credit for this purchase. So that's the problem, right? These are steps that we are doing as a normal customers, but it looks like we don't have enough money. Now we will look from the eyes of a hacker and try to buy a $1,300 item with less than the credit amount of $100. So go to the burp suite. Again, we go to the proxy, move to the HTTP history, and then you can see the entire request. And what I'm actually searching, I'm searching for the post, the login uh, post request. I see already this is the get, here it is. Here is the login and here is the cart. Now notice when you add an item to the cart, the corresponding request contains a price parameter. Here is the price, you remember? $1,337. So what you can do now is right click on the request and send the post card request to Burst Repeater. Okay, send to Repeater. Now I go to the Repeater tab. Then you can scroll 
down to the price parameter, we can see it here, and what we can do very easily is to change it, or we remove it, we keep it only one, instead of uh, $1,300. When I'm doing this, I send it back. Now we go back to the cart uh, page. You remember, not enough store credit is purchased. What we do, we do a refresh. And you can see, total 0.02. I place an order, or I try, and your order is on its way. Successfully uh, done. So I succeeded to buy an item that costs $1,300 with two cents. So why this happen? It is obvious that developers and testers have not implemented any integrity check to make sure that the value of the product price is sensible before proceeding. This led the attackers to change the price value of the leather jacket and let us buy the leather jacket for only two cents. How to prevent such types of vulnerabilities? And some of the ways that developers can prevent business logic vulnerabilities are developers and web application testers need to understand the services of the application and how client might interact with it. Make the necessary assumptions, such as the user should not be able to change some of the input values, such as the price of values, etc by using proxy applications. Developers and testers need to make sure that the value of any input is sensible before proceeding. Maintain clear design documents and data flows for all transactions and workflows. Nothing, any assumptions that are made at each stage. And developer needs to make sure that their code is concise and clear and easy to understand because it is easy to spot any bug in clear and understandable code. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you like this video, please like, and if you are not a subscriber, please do. It only takes a few seconds. Leave your comments and see you in the next one.